constantly risking absurdity and death whenever he performs above the heads of his audience. The poet, like an acrobat, climbs on rhyme to a high wire of his own making. And balancing on eye beams above a sea of faces, paces his way to the other side of day, performing entree shots and sleight of foot tricks and other high theatrics and all without mistaking anything for what it may not be. For he's the super realist who must perforce perceive taught truth before the taking of each stance or step in his supposed advance toward that still higher perch where beauty stands and waits with gravity to start her death-defying leap. And he, a little Charlie Chaplin man, who may or may not catch her fair eternal form spread eagled in the empty air of existence. The poet is an acrobat or so Lawrence Ferlinghetti tells us in that preceding poem, constantly risking absurdity. But in truth, every writer seems to have his own idea of just who and what the poet is. That's why Edmond de Rostand created, created the immortal character of Cyrano de Bergerac from the romantic play by the same name. Cyrano is a poet, but he is many things. Scholar, gadabout, soldier, lover, and the finest swordsman in all of France. The poet is a fighter. Cyrano de Bergerac by Edmond Rostand. Dolt, bumpkin, fool, insulin puppy, jobber now. Ah, yes, how do you do? And I am Cyrano Savignan Hercule de Bergerac. Buffoon! Oh. Well, what now? I really must do something to relieve these cramps. This is what comes of a lack of exercise. What do you mean by all this? My sword, sir, has gone to sleep. So be it! You shall die exquisitely. <laughs> Poet. Why, yes, sir, if you will, a poet. So while I fence with you, I'll compose a ballade extempore. A ballade? Yes, you know what that is. I, the ballade, sir, is composed of three stanzas of eight lines each. Oh, come, and a refrain of four. You, I'll compose one while I fight you. And at the end of the last line, thrust home. Will you? I will. <laughs> Ballade of the duel at the Hotel de Bergogne between de Bergerac and a... <laughs> Bay Ocean. What do you mean by that? Oh, that, sir, the title. Stop. Let me choose my rhymes. Ah, here we go. Lightly I toss my hat away. Languidly over my arm let fall the cloak that covers my bright array. Then out swords and to work with all. Launcelot in his ladies' hall, a Spartacus at the Hippodrome. I dally a while with you, dear jackal. Then, as I end the refrain, thrust home. 
Where shall I skewer my peacock? <laughs> Nay, better for you to have shunned this brawl. Here in the heart through your ribbons gay, in the belly under your silken shawl. Hark how the steel rings musical. Mark how my point floats, light as the foam, ready to drive you back to the wall. Then, as I end the refrain, thrust home. Ho, oh, for a rhyme, you are white as way. You break, you cower, you cringe, you crawl. Tack, as I parry your last essay, so may the turn of a hand forestall life with its honey, death with its gall. So may the turn of my fancy roam free, for a time, till the rhymes recall. Then, as I end the refrain, thrust home. Refrain. Prince, pray God that is Lord of all, pardon your soul, for your time has come. Beat past, when you are slant to sprawl, then as I end the refrain, thrust home. But when I turned to Shakespeare to see what his answer would be to who and what the poet is, I found that he took all the answers and rolled them all together into the character of Mercutio from Romeo and Juliet. Mercutio is all things at once. Poet, lover, priest, soldier, fool. Mercutio from Romeo and Juliet. I dreamt a dream tonight. Oh, and so did I. Well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie <laughs> in bed asleep while they do dream things true. Oh, then I see Queen Mob hath visited you. Queen Mob, who is she? Well, she is... She is the fairy's midwife. And she comes in state no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little atomized athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. Her wagon spokes are made of long spinner's legs and the cover of the wings of grasshoppers. The traces of the smallest spider's web and the colors oh, of the moonshine's watery beams. Her whip, crack, is a cricket's bone the lash of film. And in this state, she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and they do dream of love. <laughs> or ladies' lips, who straight on kisses dream, which oft the angry mob with blisters plagues, because their breath with air sweet meats tainted are. And sometime comes she with a tight pig's tail, <laughs> tickling the parson's nose as he lies asleep, and dreams he of another benefice. Amen. Sometimes she driveth o'er a soldier's neck, and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats of breeches, ambuscados, Spanish blades, drums in his ears at which he starts and wakes. And being thus frighted, swears a prayer or two and sleeps again. This is that very mob that that plates the manes of horse's hair in the night, and bakes the old flocks in foul, sluttish hairs, which once untangled, much misfortune bodes. 
This is the hag that when maids lie on their backs, presses them and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she, this is she that, this is she. Peace, Mercutio, peace. Thou talkst of nothing. Thou talkst of nothing. True. True. I talk of dreams which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy, which is as thin of substance as the air, and more inconstant than the wind, which woos even now the frozen bosom of the north. And being angered, puffs away from thence, turning his side to the dew-dropping south. 